What's going on guys? My name is Andrew Ching and welcome to What We Drive. If you are a car lover, then consider hitting the subscribe button right now. I upload new videos every week. And today I present you this, the 2012 Mercedes-Benz S350L 4MATIC Grand Edition. As we know, the Mercedes-Benz S-Club Sedans has always been the iconic luxury car. This thing came out six years ago but wasn't available in the North American market because it's the L version which has longer wheelbase. Originally costing over $100,000, this thing can now be found on the internet as little as around $20,000. Right. So now, let's see what this thing has to offer at the price of a new Toyota Corolla. Usually, I start with the exterior, but this time I'm going to start with the interior because this car is really about what's going on on the inside. Now, there are just too many features to be covered in this video, but I found a few features that I want to talk about. First thing you notice will be the interior. This car has got a very beautiful and luxurious interior. You have wood trim decorations almost in every appropriate places, finished in glossy look. And the steering wheel and the seats, of course, are finished in leather and some wood. Meanwhile, the sunroof or the moonroof is panoramic, which I bet isn't standard on the new Corolla. The next detail will be this Grand Edition label, which I bet you don't see often in Mercedes cars. Well, because this car came out to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the S-Class sedan, therefore that's why it's got a label. You can also find this label on the outside of the car and on the carpet. So you can tell that Mercedes is really trying to remind you that this car is the Grand Edition. One crazy feature this car has is the night vision. Basically, you press this button over there and then you can see what's going on in the evening better. I think this is probably some very standard feature nowadays, but back in 2012, this must be super luxurious and advanced. Another little crazy safety feature is that it's got a fire extinguisher underneath the seat, which if I'm the owner, I hope I don't have to use it one day. The seats are of course very comfortable and relaxed. I can sit in here and almost fall asleep. But my favorite part is if you press this button over here, which is not available on the other side, you can now control the passenger side seat and do pretty much whatever you want to the seat. So therefore, if you really don't like this person, you can do whatever you want to this person. And I really like this about the center console. Usually in a normal car, you can only open it from like one side, but not in this car. You can open it from the driver's side or the passenger side, which I think is a really good engineering. And right next to the storage unit is this little palm rest, of course, finished in leather. It's very soft and comfortable to put your hand on. But the more interesting thing is you can open it and you'll find an even more beautiful looking dial pad, which allows you to dial people while your phone is connected with Bluetooth. But I really don't think anybody would be using this dial pad. Still, you have to admit its existence really makes you feel kind of luxurious. And of course, you don't really have to spend much force and close the door because it's automatic. And now let's move on to the infotainment system. Although we can't judge it by today's standard because it doesn't have a touch screen and the UI and the entire control, it's just kind of outdated. But remember, this car came out six years ago and some functionalities are even better than today's $20,000 Corolla. First, the radio has got this old school interface, which I think back then makes this car feel more rich and expensive. Second, this car has got a DVD player and not just one because Mercedes thinks that you may want to watch more than one DVD, therefore they put six in there and you can switch between. Lastly, the knob. Yes, the knob. It's made of aluminum, it's heavy and big, and it does everything in the command system. But the best attention to detail is that this knob works based on which menu you are in. For example, if you are in a menu or interface with only four options, you can only rotate a knob four times. Anywhere beyond that, you can do it. It sort of has this invisible force that's going against you. But once you get out of that menu, like you go into an eight option menu, you can now rotate the knob eight times and then it will stop you from moving forward, which I think is a very cool thing, even back then and today. And sometimes when you want to clear the bumps and go through some uneven roads, 
you can actually rise this car by pressing this button and the car will rise. It's kind of slow, but I will show you how it is. Mercedes knows that people who bought this car are not just going to be driving in this car, they may also be driven in this car. Therefore, they make the back seats extremely comfortable, even more comfortable than the seats in the front. The first thing I noticed was this picnic table, and it's made of this thick, nice piece of wood, of course. So basically, you can enjoy a little meal here, or you can be working on the very important email that you'll be sending later while you're being driven around. But the interesting thing is, the picnic table is only available to the passenger on the right. So therefore, if you are the passenger on the left, I'm sorry, no picnic for you. However, Mercedes knows that their customers may be very picky and wants even more, so which comes to my favorite function of the back. You see, even though I'm already comfortable, but if I want to be more comfortable and relaxed, I can press this button and then I can control the seats in front of me. So basically, I can push the seats in front of me all the way to the front and then I can pretty much lay down on the seat and enjoy the comfortable ride.